This seems to be the situation we're stuck in. On the left and on the right, among diplomats, energy company executives, investors, scientists, anarchists, clergy, and activists, serious people are worried about global warming and feel the urgent need to do something about it. Across the spectrum, though, nobody seems to have the tools, clout, or conceptual framework we need to fix it, or even to come up with a good plan to protect ourselves from the greatest dangers. There's no reset button for civilization, and no viable plan for transforming global infrastructure, agriculture, and energy networks in the next 10 to 20 years. And while smart, dedicated, and thoughtful people fumble with political machinery that doesn't work, such as carbon pricing markets, protests in the United Nations, all of us in the global north go on about our business, driving, flying, leaving lights on, running heaters and air conditioners, eating meat, charging our devices, living unsustainable lives predicated on easy consumption. In a perverse irony, one of the main things that connected the disparate parties at the United Nations, Flood Wall Street, the IETA, and the People's Climate March was a system of cultural technology that's silently burning up masses of carbon while shunting activist outrage into impotent feedback loops. The most common sight at all the events that week was people on their iPhones and Androids, checking email, tweeting, taking pictures. The global information and communications ecosystem that they were plugged into is now estimated to use about 10% of the world's electricity. That ecosystem relies heavily on coal. Every time you check your email, you're heating up the planet. We do it every day. We can't stop. We won't stop. The problem with the People's Climate March wasn't really that it lacked a goal, or that it was distracting, superficial and, su superficial and vacuous. The problem with the United Nations isn't that the politicians are ignorant, hidebound, self-interested, or corrupt. The problem with our response to climate change isn't a problem with passing the right laws or finding the right price for carbon or changing people's minds or raising awareness. Everybody already knows. The problem is that the problem's too big. The problem is that different people want different things. The problem is that nobody has real answers. The problem is that the problem's us.